this is an animation, not a simulation, of what we can calculate happened in that early time. So let's see. So what we have is the contraction of these initial um, force-free filaments because we're running in, in uh, currents moving in the same direction or organizing themselves and repelling currents moving in the opposite direction. So those are the field lines, and we see basically a hierarchy of currents developing at all scales. So the smallest scale uh, is about 10,000 light years at the density of the universe that we actually observe. And we see in the present day universe these same structures, these same structures forming like the Veil Nebula. But over immense lengths of time, this is trillions of years, you have the buildup of these filaments into larger and larger structures, which again we can observe in the laboratory on much smaller scales, so that eventually you get to maximal structures, and I'll tell you how we calculate these maximal structures, in which the filaments are of the order of a gigaparsec in radius. Tired of inflation, wars, and inequality caused by the energy crisis? LPP Fusion is developing a solution that could allow everyone to have cheap, clean, off-grid, and sustainable fusion energy. Invest now as we seek to bring this potentially life-changing technology to market. For more information, visit lppfusion.com. So once we get to a certain level, this gigaparsec, then gravity starts to become a significant factor. Because in plasmas, we find that velocity is a scale invariant. So the velocity of plasma phenomena of a similar type are the same at all scales from the laboratory up to the largest, which is very convenient because it means that things that take billions of years in the cosmos take microseconds in the laboratory because time scales as distance when velocity is a constant. But gravity scales in a different way. So gravity is a, compared with electromagnetism, compared with plasma phenomena, Gravity is totally insignificant on laboratory scales, but gets more and more significant with larger and larger scales. So once you get to gigaparsec scales, these two forces come into balance, and therefore you have the possibility of gravitational contraction. Now, in addition, the scale is determined by the fact that for an object to contract, its plasma must be collisional. That means that the average particle will collide with another particle within the dimensions of the object. If it's not collisional, and you have something like the solar system, the solar system is obviously gravitating, but it's not collapsing because it's not collisional. The planets are too far apart at the moment to uh, collide. So what we have approximately of the order of six or seven trillion years ago is that these filaments start to col collapse gravitationally. And they start to collapse first along their axis. So basically what we first have is a collapse into disks. And these are rotating disks. And what happens is that you have the formation of these filaments at progressively smaller scales. And this is important because for an object to collapse, it has to get rid of angular momentum and has to transfer angular momentum out of the object. Magnetic fields can do this 
through these filaments that form at all scales. So we go down in scale from superclusters to clusters to galaxies to molecular clouds, always forming these filaments at smaller and smaller scales until we get to the scale of stars. <laughs>